Hi, my name is Kim Keller, owner of K&K Hearing Associates, and in this segment we're going to talk a little bit about the anatomy of the ear and where your hearing loss could be occurring and whether hearing aids could possibly help you or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to break your ear down into three sections. And your three sections are your external ear, your middle ear, and your inner ear. Now sound travels in waves, whether you knock, clap, speaking, or any other noises that occur, sound travels in waves. So as the waves occur, this part of your ear, right here, collects the sound and directs it down the ear canal. So basically this part of your ear is a collector and director of sound. As it directs it down the ear canal, your external auditory meatus, it allows the sound to hit the eardrum. As the sound hits the eardrum, known as your tympanic membrane, the eardrum will start to vibrate. And as it vibrates, pulsates, whichever term you want to use, there is a bone attached to it in your middle ear called your malleus bone, right here. Then there's a bone attached to the malleus called your incus and one attached to the incus which is called your stapes. Now you might learn them in school or have learned them in school as the hammer, the anvil, and stirrup. They're also known as ossicles and this is also considered your ossicular chain. So as the eardrum vibrates, the malleus bone vibrates which causes the incus to vibrate which causes the stapes to vibrate and they act like a tuning fork. Then what happens is that sound gets sent through a window here called your oval window and as it travels through the oval window it goes into this snail-like object here which is called your cochlea. In the cochlea you have little hair cells and you also have a fluid called endolymph. Now to give you an idea of the size of this cochlea it's about the size of a button but in that cochlea inside that little button this is curled up like three times there's about 25,000 to 30,000 little tiny hair cells. And they're arranged kind of like a piano keyboard. You've got your highs, and then you've got your lows, and you've got everything in between. And depending on the intensity of the sound is going to determine which one of these hair cells is, is affected. If you have a hearing loss, your hair cells are falling down. Or you could have damage in your middle ear. Or you could have something going on in your external ear. There are different tests that we do to make sure where your loss is coming from. We'll do, we can do a pure tone test, we do a bone conduction test. And by doing those two tests, we can rule out or get a good idea where your loss is coming from. So the bottom line is, is if your hearing loss is in your external ear or your middle ear, you definitely need to go see a doctor because there may be something medically or surgically that can be done and it's up to that doctor to rule out whether uh, medical or surgical treatment should be done with your particular hearing uh, loss at that time. The most common loss, which is about 80-85% of people, maybe even as high as 90%, is the loss inside the little snail-like object here. That's called nerve deafness. It's clinically known as the sensorineural hearing loss and that's where the little hair cells are falling down and they're just not as strong as they used to be. Uh, I like to demonstrate it as when you're hearing great and you've got perfect hearing, it's like my fingers standing nice and tall and if you've got a hearing loss that you're totally deaf, they're down like this and if you're somewhere in between, they're kind of like in between. And the more high pitch loss you have, which is the damage out here, if you've got more high frequency loss, you're going to suffer more in the high frequency range of speech, which is like your consonant sounds or your combinations of consonants, like your TH, SH, ST, PH type sounds, the FST type sounds. Those sounds are high pitch, they're harder to hear, and when you have a high frequency hearing loss and say you've got good low pitch hearing, which are your vowel sounds like your A, E, I, O, U, those sounds are stronger. So what happens is if you've got a word, and let's use the word carve, for instance, A-R. Now that's got a strong consonant in the R, but it's also got a really strong vowel in the A. Ah, R. Now you've got a V-E at the end, which is a consonant. V. That's not as strong. So when somebody goes carve, the V-E almost rolls off. And if you've got a high frequency hearing loss, you may only hear car, cars, or you may think it's card because you lose the V-E. So now what you start doing when you have this loss is you start trying to rely on the context of the sentence. Um, is he asking me to carve something? Is he asking me to card something? Is he asking me to get in a car and go somewhere? 
Well, the context of the sentence, because if you heard enough of the other words, you'll start to puzzle things out. This is why some people need to look at you when you're talking to them, because when you say the word car versus carve, you see the VE on the lips, that person picks that up. They think they're not reading lips, but we all know that from the time we were real little, we've learned to read lips, just like when your parents were teaching you to say water. Okay, look at my lips, water, and that's how we learn to speak. So as we get a hearing loss, we have a tendency to resort back to our infant days when we were learning to speak, watching the movement of the lips in association to what we hear. So that's it. That's the anatomy of the ear, and that's what's important for us to know to better help you.